Okay, now as we've gotten our initial block in done, we're going to zoom in here and bring in some of those details because there are a lot more variations in value and intensity, temperature, and hue in both the woods and the snow. So let's start with pulling out some of our sky color where we're going to put in some more trees because there are trees along both edges here that we need to have a little space for. The reason I'm pulling this out is it's much easier to lay it in to begin with in detail and then pull out than it is to paint around those tree shapes. So the section that we're going to start with first is beginning to pull some of our violet and green into the tree masses, remembering that the blue is going to dominate below. So the darkest areas of the trees are going to be that blue. So we're pulling violet on top of the blue. And you can see real subtle differences there. Very subtle differences. And it's going to help us begin to shape our wood a little bit more than if we went with a solid ultramarine blue. Because there's a little bit more light striking this upper part. Cut a little white there than there is below. So we have some subtle colors beginning to happen there. Then we need to also we can think about pulling in some of our green. Remember some of these trees and vines in here are evergreen. So we can indicate where they are in a very subtle way. We can pull in some greens there towards the top, where the pines might be, and begin to break up some of the wood again with a little bit of the green. Again, not trying to represent, but to create the illusion. Our lighter tree lavender is what we're going to use to create the trees that are over here on the far left. And we can do that by pulling with almost no pressure here on that left hand side. So we're pulling from side to side, letting the way that the knife skims across the surface create some of the foliage and the holes for the trees. Then we're going to begin to lay in some of our darker trees that are right here that we pulled out the space for. So again, I'm going to pull the knife with almost no pressure. turn that upside down too so that I can pull it a little bit more easily. Don't forget that you can turn your panel, your painting. Pull it this way so that I get something that looks more tree-like. There's a second one over here that we pulled off for that I'm going to indicate. I may need to mix a little bit more of the violet since I ran just ran out of my mixture there. And I know I'm going to need a little bit more dark. So give myself a little bit more of the violet and green. Don't worry about matching it exactly. That's not as important as having the hues involved in there. So now I can turn it back around and I can pull the other direction. So now I can pull this way 
and begin to create that illusion of a tree. And turn it back and forth. Until you're satisfied with the results. So we have our trees right there at the edge. I actually need a tiny little bit of the dark in that far edge of our lighter trees so that they're not quite so. So light. So I'm going to pull a little of the purple in there. Then I'm going to go back to our lavender, our warm lavender, and pull that on top. To let it blend. And I'm going to look for where I have other areas that require that same color and value. And one of those areas it's going to be right here. There's going to be a slight little bit of it, just a kiss of it. And then a little coming this way. And what I'm doing right now is putting it on really lightly. Then I can go back and do the dance with my smaller knife to blend it in some. I notice that this is also catching the light just a little bit. So need to have some of that in there. Then we can see that in places we have additional areas of light that crop in to break up the space just a little bit and begin to indicate that the light is creeping through the trees. So we can add those in. And we can go back and finesse them in just a minute. We're not going to leave them as hard as they appear right now. And I want to make sure those intervals stay different so that there's not too much sameness there in the painting. So we'll come back and finesse those in just a moment. Let's give some attention now to the snow. Back here in the far edge, there's a little bit of lighter color. It's a little warmer because light is breaking through right here. So we need to go in there and indicate that. And as soon as we do that, there's a much stronger sense of illumination. And we're going to put some more in that's going to break up this big mass. And notice that the lighter areas follow along the direction of the shadows. And there's some larger ones like this one right here. And then there's smaller ones as well. We don't want to add too many. So this one is a little too much. So we can go back in and pull some off. Easy to finesse that. We can also begin to pull in some more blue. So where we need to fix some edges or add some more variation, and a little thick paint there, then go back in. And we're simplifying that pattern some. We're not going to have as many things breaking it up as in the photograph, but we're going to break it up a good deal. And I'm also going to pull some of the blue from the sky in here because I want to get a darker dark. There's a shadow that comes from right here. That's much darker, and I want to have that in there. And if I need to change the direction of it, just push and pull paint off to finesse that edge. 
and I want at least one more area with that same blue because there's some nice dark shadows wherever we get close to those trees back here. So the areas along the base of the trees are much darker. If you get too thick a paint going on, just pull off a little bit. This paint is too thick, it'll stick up instead of sitting down. So we're beginning to break up that big mass. And as we move over, we're going to get more of the ultramarine blue in there. So we begin to pull some of the ultramarine blue into this bigger mass of, we pull some of the phthalo into the bigger mass of ultramarine. And we're creating a strong linear pattern there that's going to serve us really well as a, something to create the focal point. So again, we have ultramarine blue, the darker ultramarine blue, breaking into the shadows here and giving us that linear pattern that's going to help us create a focal point right in this area, which means we're going to have to break up our lavender a little bit more. But remember where the strongest contrast is and where the leading lines point is where that focal point is going to be. So we're going to break our lavender shape up a little bit more and lighten it up to help pull the focal point back over here and make this area in here the strongest focal point. We can create more contrast in the lavender by bringing some of our ultramarine blue and white into the shadow mixture. As well as pulling a little of our lavender and white into this area over here. going to help all of that will help lead your eye towards the area that we're trying to make and establish as the focal point. So I can break up these colors a little bit more. I can apply a little bit more of that thicker paint here. and finesse these edges just a little bit. And as the snow comes down towards the bottom and the foreground, I'm going to have a transition here to a cooler color in order to help pull and push our color in the snow forward and backwards. So we don't want it to stay all one color. We want to break that up some. So that's why I'm bringing some more of the ultramarine blue into that foreground. I'm working that color pulling it direction the direction of the marks so if these get a little too hard simply pulling is going to begin to break them up a little bit and soften some of these edges so that our hardest edges are going to be right in here where we want our focal point to be. 
So I can come back in and harden some of those up a little bit to really help draw your eye to this area right here more than the others.